Good morning, I'm Dr. Gary Bender. Um, for our classes uh, today, we're going to be out here in a citrus grove in Palma Valley. Palma Valley is a uh, large valley located in northern San Diego, San Diego County, about 15 miles east of Highway 15. And uh, we're out here. We have a, a large acreage of Valencia oranges, and Valencia oranges are uh, the largest citrus crop we have in San Diego County. San Diego County probably has around 5,000 acres of total citrus and about 2,500 acres in, in, of organic citrus. Organic citrus pays higher prices to the growers, but we've got a rather big problem emerging here. We have Asian citrus psyllid that's moved in. It, we have it in the county. We don't have the Wang Long Bing disease yet that it transmits but it's close. It's up in Riverside County and it's, uh, it's coming and, and we know it. Now you may hear in the background a helicopter spraying. Uh, the growers get together and they spray the, con the conventional orchards uh, with a pesticide that lasts about six to eight weeks uh, to control the psyllids. The idea is to keep the psyllid population down so when the Wang Long Bing disease does come, it won't spread so fast. Uh, but the organic growers have a problem. They have materials they can spray, but they don't last very long. Each, each spray lasts maybe seven to 10 days, uh, perhaps a little longer, but you know, you have to keep continually spray and it's expensive. And uh, I, there's been some thought, a lot of thought from the organic growers that they might have to go out of production once the disease gets here. Okay, so we're in Valencia's. This is at the end of March. Uh, you can see the fruit uh, behind me here. Uh, they're they're small. They're still they're still growing, and they will be picked. Uh, they'll be mature between uh, sometime between May to September, perhaps October, and the growers can pick when the prices are highest for them. Uh, you can see the fruit are orange. And a lot of people who don't know oranges think that as soon as they turn orange, they're ready to eat. Uh, but that's not true. They turn, they start to turn, the peel starts to turn orange uh, after cold nights, usually in December, uh, that triggers it. But it takes quite a while for the sugars to come up in the fruit. And so, you know, people don't, don't know oranges eat these too early and they're, they're just not very good at all. So, now I just picked this off the, off the tree with my hand. That's not normally how they pick. They'll pick with a clipper that leaves just a button in here because sometimes when you pick, you tear a little piece of the flesh out. That gets infected with usually a penicillium fungus and that starts to rot the fruit. And uh, the problem with that is a lot of times when they do get picked, uh, they don't see it as it goes through the packing house. It gets packed and now you have a fruit with uh, some infection inside a box and by the time that box gets uh, you know stored and shipped and opened at the store sometimes it's full of penicillium fungus so you don't want that you got to be have a short little clipper to clip these and you also never ever want to pick fruit up off the ground uh, you know sometimes they'll land and they'll hit a little piece of sand and get infected with the penicillium fungus so that's never done. Um, okay, we'll be talking about a few other things we see out here. I'm going to pan around, show you what the what the ground looks like. Oh, you can see there's a, a low ground cover here. Um, it's basically a low weed cover. They'll come through and mow these, and this is on a slope. Um, the water comes, if you have a heavy rain, water comes rushing down through the, between these trees here. And if you didn't have this, you, your erosion would be horrible. So this is a good erosion control me method this grower has. Uh, by the way, we are out in the middle of a citrus grove that was planted in 19, 1991, I'm sorry, 1991 by the University of California at Riverside, Dr. Michael Roos. And uh, we have 10, 10 new rootstocks out here and uh, we have 20 replications so we have about 200 trees in this block and the university of california is constantly looking for new rootstocks 
and that they can add to the mixture out here. This rootstock they're on right now, I mean, the, 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 the most common rootstock out here in Palma Valley is either Troyer citrange or Carrizo citrange. And uh, sometimes the newer groves are on some C35. We do have some C35 out here. Okay, we're looking across the road here now. And you can see how they're topped at the, you know, have a kind of a square cut at the top. And as we pan around, you can see how they were pruned. These were done by big saws. They, they pull through the uh, orchard and they cut off the tops and then they go through maybe another year, another year and cut off down through the sides. And they, they look like uh, square boxes out here, but this is how they keep them under control. They uh, looks to me like they're pruning at about 15 to 16 feet high. Uh, if you let a citrus tree grow, They'll go on up to, I've heard of in the 30s, 30 feet, 35 feet high. So you eventually do have to keep them down. Now this particular grove was planted in the 1960s. I'm going to walk in and show you a, a rootstock, a graft union of these big trees. Okay, we are underneath uh, one of these bigger trees here that were planted back in the 1960s. Uh, this is a sweet, this is a Valencia orange. Uh, planted on a Troyer citrange rootstock. Uh, Troyer citrange is uh, uh, one of the trifoliates that's resistant to a lot of diseases. That's why they use it. Uh, so you can see the graft union here, and we have this fluted look to the, to the rootstock. That tells you it's a type of a trifoliate type tree. And it's a good yielding tree. It's resistant to Phytophthora root rot and, uh, and quick decline virus. That's a Tristasia virus. And uh, so you, as long as you keep the cyan above the soil, uh, you'll be okay. If, if you have erosion and the soil builds up, uh, then you're gonna have problems. You're gonna have a Phytophthora gomosis right here and that will kill the tree. Uh, that's what you saw on the parent navel uh, pictures. Uh, they, when they first planted those on sweet orange rootstock and then they went to sour orange rootstock, they had problems with Phytophthora, and then they had problems with Tristasia. So out here, we're, we're resisting both of those, and we're good as long as we can keep this above the soil line. One of our pests out here is the brown garden snail, and they build up. Uh, in ra rainy weather, they can really build up, and then you can get a lot of leaf damage and fruit damage. So the grower has to keep this, this population under control. It actually looks like he's doing a pretty good job here. We don't see too many, uh, too many snails out here. In past years, I have seen tremendous buildup of snails. And if you wanna keep a barrier, you can actually mix a copper fertilizer with white paint and paint a stripe out here around the trunk. And from the soil, as they come up from the soil, they won't cross that. They don't like crossing copper. And copper is, it's a copper fertilizer, so it's sold as a fertilizer in California. And it's kind of a nice mixture, and it'll last about two years. It, they have done this in the past. Now, I don't see evidence of it right now, but I think they have uh, certainly done this in the past. Here's another problem we have out in the citrus groves, uh, gophers. <laughs> and especially in areas where they have a lot of ground cover, um, they have to be under control can't let them go because they love citrus roots and they'll they'll chew on citrus roots and they'll that'll introduce other diseases especially one called dry root rot it's caused by a fusarium fungus gets into the damaged roots and that'll actually finish the tree off so uh, yeah these have to be controlled uh, we'll be showing you some videos later on about gopher control Okay, we're in another location in this grove. You can see all the dead stumps in front of me here. And we're gonna pan around, show you some of the dead trees. This is a disease we have out here in some areas. And uh, I'll be talking about this. I'm gonna go up to the tree now and get under the tree. We'll talk a little bit more about this. This disease is called quick decline or Tristasia virus. It's a virus that came from Brazil uh, back in the 1940s 
and uh, I'll give you a little bit of history about this in just a second. This is a uh, great tree to look at here. It's got two diseases. Uh, this was a problem uh, I mentioned earlier. This is these, uh, this block died of Tristasia or quick decline virus because they were planted on sour orange rootstock. Uh, they had a the, pro, the grower previous to the, previous to this grower had gotten a good deal on on uh, oranges on sour orange rootstock, and they are resistant to Phytophthora, but they are very susceptible to, to, to Tristasia. And basically, this whole block died. This whole block had been planted on that same rootstock. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they've all switched over either to either Troyer citrans or Carrizo citrans rootstock to avoid this. But take a look down here. You can't even see the graft union. Well, the graft union is actually right about there, but it's buried. It's, it's almost buried. On the other side, it's more buried. Soil has gotten up above this graft union and started to cause Phytophthora gamosis. And there's a little bit right there where my finger is. I'll show you some other, just a little bit here. Okay, so this is some old gamosis. Uh, they got in here, you can see somehow the graft union got buried with some erosion. Some soil came down here and buried that. That's when it gets started. And gamosis will climb up the tree here. This is old gamosis, so it's not, doesn't have gumming anymore, but it does have bark peeling. Look at that. So that'll take it out. It's a phloem disease. It only goes into the phloem, not into the xylem, but it will kill the tree, of course. So this, this poor tree, is the victim of two diseases, Tristasia first, and then Phytophthora next. As I said earlier, most of our citrus out here in Palma Valley are Valencia oranges, the oranges with seeds. We do have some seedless navels, uh, Washington navels, Lane Late navels, and some Cara Cara navels. Those are the ones with kind of the pinkish, reddish flesh. But they're trying some other things. This is a gold nugget mandarin uh, planting. This happened to be one of my old trials. This was an irrigation trial we put in when they first started becoming popular. Uh, I'm going to pick a fruit here. It's a seedless, easy peeler. They peel easy. This is a little bit early in the season. This is March. We usually wait uh, a month or two before we start picking these, but they'll peel easily with your fingernail. And they're, when they get a little bit more mature, their little kids can peel them. They're very easy to peel. So this is a little tough right now because it's early, but it's good because it's got the two things that kids need, seedlessness, and they can peel them, you know? They don't need a knife to do it. Uh, uh, just a couple things other, we have also some grapefruit out here, some kumquats. We have quite a mixture of citrus out here. Uh, they're all susceptible to gophers. I see gophers out here and squirrels. I see a few squirrels. The open holes have our squirrels. The closed holes are gophers. Um, but it's a very good area to grow citrus. And boy, in the spring when everything's in flower, it smells wonderful out here. So hope you got a little bit of information out of our tour of the citrus in Palma Valley today. And thank you very much.